Bienvenidos, Usham Deed, and welcome Anne Arundel Community College learners from the CTS 131 Section 402 course for the spring 2021 semester. This is the Cisco Networking Academy's Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 course curriculum. And in this Packet Tracer Skills activity, skills number three, we're going to be taking another look at completing a configuration that includes port security. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at this custom activity here. We have a single switch. As you can see, each of the ports to which the PCs are connected have been labeled. And then we have PC5 out here, which has not been connected yet. Here are the IP addresses of all five of the hosts. So it'll be 192.168.1.11 for host PC1, 12 for PC2. And that's also listed out here along with the MAC addresses for each of those devices. We're going to secure the unused ports. We're going to configure sticky MAC addresses. And we're also going to be configuring static MAC addresses. Now, as you can see down here in the lower right-hand corner, we're already at two out of the 36 possible points. And so let's forward the page. And here we go. For security purposes, disable all unused ports, including the gigabit Ethernet interfaces. Now, I'm going to take extra care here not to disable uh, specifically the ports that are being used as I did in a previous activity. So let's go from user exec to privilege exec with the enable command. I'm going to get into global config. And there's a few things I'm going to do here first. Now these are not required. So I'm going to say uh, no IP domain lookup, no IP domain lookup. And then we're going to go into line con zero and I'm going to say logging synchronous. And those are just two sort of out of the box configuration commands I like to set up so that we don't run into any issues on the CLI throughout the activity. The next thing I'm gonna do is let's just call this switch 01 so that it's got some kind of a name other than switch. Again, we're not getting any points for that. However, not a bad idea to set those things up. And let me go ahead and pull this up just enough to where you can see the completion percentage along the bottom. So how do we see the ports that are currently in use as well as the ones that are not in use. Well, we say do show IP interface brief. And you can see here that fast ethernet 0, 1, 2, and 3 are in use. And then all these other ports are down. And then fast ethernet 0, 24. And so let's go ahead and we are going to disable all unused ports. So we're gonna use that interface range command. We're gonna say fast ethernet 0, 4 to 23 because fast ethernet 0, 024 is being used, and then gigabit ethernet 0, 1 to 2. And that puts us simultaneously into the configuration mode for all of those ports. And this is where we're gonna simply say shut down. And you can see we got some points for that. And so uh, verify the correct ports have been administratively shut down by issuing the show IP interface brief command. Now it says notice in the topology, switch ports fast ethernet 0, 1 through 3 and 24 are in use and should remain active and up. Let's click the right arrow and move on to the next part of this activity. So configure a static MAC address. So on the interface for fast ethernet 01, make the following configuration changes. We're gonna change a permanent static access or configure permanent static access mode. We're gonna enable port security. And it looks like we're using VLAN one for everything here. In fact, if I was to say do show VLAN brief, and that's what we see is that everything is in VLAN one. So there's no need for the switch port access VLAN command. We're simply gonna hard code it as a static access port. We're going to enable port security and we're going to configure a static MAC address for PC1. So how do we get the MAC address for PC1? Well, it's actually listed out right here. If it wasn't listed out in the activity, in the real world, it might not be listed out. You can come in with an IP config forward slash all, and let's validate it, right? Not a bad idea to check. Let's make sure that there's not a typo in the activity and that maybe Packet Tracer hasn't changed the MAC address for whatever reason. And we can see here that everything is good to go. So let's pull back up switch one. And I'm going to bring this down just a bit here because we don't need all of that space. And we can also see what's going on here. Let's get into fast ethernet 
zero, one. Now configure it as permanent or static access mode. So switch port mode access. Now remember, before I run this command, and this is actually something that's very good to remember, if I said do show interface fast ethernet zero one switch port, we'd see a lot of very interesting information here, specifically the administrative default mode, which is a dynamic trunking protocol default mode on current Cisco switches, which is dynamic auto. And what that means is if I plug something into this switch port, fast ethernet zero one, and in fact, it applies to all switch ports on this switch right now, by default, if I plug something in that is not a switch that has dynamic desirable configured on the other end, or it is configured hard coded as a static trunk port with that switch port mode trunk command, then it's going to fall back and the operational mode will be access. But we don't want to leave that to chance. And we know that a PC is plugged in here. So that's why we would say switch port mode access. Now, if I rerun that do show interface fast ethernet zero one switch port command, now take a look at the operational mode as well as the administrative mode. So administratively, we hard coded it as static access. It's no longer set to dynamic auto. That was the default. So now it's static access and look at the operational mode, still static access, but it will always be static access because we've hard coded it to static access. Now we're in fast ethernet zero one and it says enable port security. Now remember switch port port security. This command must be run by itself on any port on which you want port security to function. That's the command that activates port security. Now that it's activated, I can go in and configure multiple other commands. And let's take a look here with the switch port port security. I can configure the aging time. I can configure uh, the MAC address, uh, how we're gonna learn the MAC addresses, whether it's gonna be sticky or whether it's gonna be hard-coded, static. I can declare the maximum number of MAC addresses allowed. Remember, by default, it is one. And I can configure the violation mode, whether it's protect, restrict, or shutdown, remembering that the default mode is shut down. And I'm gonna show you something else here in just a second, because this is one of the tricky things that they will get you on. They'll either show you switch port, port security, MAC address, and maximum and violation, but they don't have this command right there. If you don't have that command by it with no options to switch port port security, all of the other switch port port security commands that you can configure, like aging, MAC address, maximum, violation, none of those are active. That is the command that activates any of the other switch port port security commands. All right, <clears throat> so now that that's taken care of, let's say switch port port security, MAC address, and if I do a question mark here, you can see we could do sticky or I can do static by hard coding it. Well, it's asking for static. So let's say 00E0.8fox, and we saw how we would learn this information. We could either get it off the diagram here, but in the real world, you're probably gonna be doing an IP config uh, forward slash all. And that is the last option, is the MAC address. So I'm gonna hit enter here, and you can see we picked up two points for that. And that's how you would, uh, statically configure it. But let's take a look at do show run right now and take a look at fast ethernet zero one. So here you see that it does not say sticky. And if it doesn't say sticky, the uh, implication is it's implicitly, uh, or I shouldn't say implicitly, but the implication is, is that it is statically uh, configured. And so that's what we have here. Now I want to show you two other commands. Let me say switch port port security. And I show you this often. I'm going to say maximum one. And then I'm going to say switch port port security violation shutdown. Right. So I've just added two configuration commands to fast ethernet zero one for port security. I'm saying that we can only have one Mac address. And I'm also saying that we can, or that we will shut the port down if we have a violation of this switch port port security policy. But let's take a look at do show run. Neither of those commands show up in the running config. And the reason for this is that those are the defaults. 
That's why we don't see those commands there. So remember that because one of the great questions that you'll often see is they'll show you this snippet of code and ask you, what is the violation mode? What is going to happen if there's a violation? And then they'll ask you, what is the maximum number of MAC addresses allowed on this port? Again, testing your knowledge of the Cisco defaults. All right. So change the violation mode. So change the port security violation mode to restrict. And we're going to get two points for that. So let's go ahead and say switch port, port security, violation mode, restrict. Now remember, the difference between restrict and protect and shutdown is restrict, unlike shutdown, does not shut the port down, right? It doesn't stop traffic uh, totally um, and shut the port down, I should say. Uh, and unlike protect, restrict is going to generate a syslog message for you. So you're going to know what's going on. So we'll change the mode to restrict um, and then verify port security settings have been changed, <clears throat> excuse me, using the do show port security command. So do show port security, whoops, port security. And you can see there it is. The maximum secure address count is one and the violation mode, the security action is to restrict, meaning it's going to drop the traffic from the offending MAC address and not let that traffic go through. And you're going to get a syslog message telling you, hey, you've got a problem here. So from PC1, PC1, let's ping the default gateway. And that default gateway has got to be right up there at the top. So we're going to say ping 192.168.1.1 and everything works. And it says click the arrow in the lower right corner to the next pane. And off we go. We've got 16 out of 36. And here we are. This is where we're going to get our last 20 points. So we're going to configure sticky MAC addresses on fast Ethernet 02 that allows two MAC addresses. So let's pull this back up. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to drop that down a little bit. And let's get into interface fast Ethernet 02. Now, configure permanent static access mode, right? And that's what we're saying here with switch port mode access. Because otherwise, dynamic trunking protocol will try to negotiate to see do I need to be an access port or should I be a trunk port? We don't want that. Enable port security, switch port, port security. Remember that command has to be run for all of the other port security configuration commands to be activated. Configure sticky MAC addresses, right? So switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. And what that means is upon receipt of the first inbound frame to fast ethernet 02, which would be from PC2, it will learn the source MAC address, right? Because in that frame, you have the source and the destination MAC. And it will learn, <clears throat> excuse me, that address. So right now though, do show run, you can see that the sticky is just here by itself. We don't have a MAC address. Well, that's because we haven't generated any traffic any inbound traffic that would result in a frame arriving on fast ethernet 02 from PC2 with which the switch can then learn the MAC address, the source MAC address of the frame that arrives on that port, which would be PC2's MAC. All right, now we're gonna allow a maximum of two MAC addresses. So switch port, port security, maximum two. And we'll hit enter and we pick up some points there. Uh, and again, it's now asking us to ping the default gateway from PC2. Now, the pings are going to be successful. And not only that, these pings will be generating layer two frames that get them from the PC to the default gateway via the switch. And the switch will now learn the source MAC address that is attached to port fast ethernet 02, which is PC2's MAC address. So we ping the 192.168.1.1. And now when we come back here to the switch and we say, do show run, what we're going to see down here on fast ethernet 02 is the stickiness, right? We've glued that MAC address to fast ethernet 02. Now, remember, we're allowing a maximum of two. So we could unplug PC2 and plug in something else, which tells me maybe it's PC3 that we're going to be doing that with. All right, so we're going to configure sticky MAC addresses on fast Ethernet 03 that allows only one MAC address. So let's jump on to fast Ethernet 03, which is here, 
right, that comes out here to PC4. So let's click on the switch and let's go ahead and I'm going to slide this over so that we can actually see what we're doing here. The instructions, interface fast Ethernet 03. So we're going to say switch port mode access. And then we're going to enable port security. So switch port port security. You have to run that. I cannot stress this enough, right? If I'm the voice in your head when you're taking that CCNA exam or whatever the exam is that reminds you, hey, that's right. You have to have that command with no options in order to enable all of the other switch port port security commands. If I'm that voice in your head, then I've done my job. So switch port port security. And we're going to configure sticky MAC addresses, right? So we're going to say switch port port security MAC address sticky. Now, we probably shouldn't see anything there because we haven't generated any traffic. So let's say do show run and let's confirm that. Uh, and did I not get into fast Ethernet 03? Hold on. I thought I was in fast Ethernet 03 there. Oh, and there you have it. I was in fast Ethernet 02. And so let's go back here to interface fast Ethernet 03, the, the bonus lab, we'll call it. So switch port, port security. Uh, so it's a dynamic port, right? So switch port mode access. We got a hard coded and it says it's dynamic because of the dynamic trunking protocol running on that port. So we're going to override dynamic trunking protocol DTP and make it an access port by hard coding it. We're going to say switch port port security and then switch port port security MAC address sticky. And now if I say do show run, now we have what we're looking for. Now here's what's interesting, right? It says configure permanent static address mode, enable port security, configure sticky MAC address, which we've done. Now ping the default gateway from PC4. So we'll come to the desktop here and let's say ping 192.168.1.1. And we're running these ping commands in order to generate frames that will show up on our switch from these source hosts providing a source MAC address with which port security configures automagically with sticky the address that's going to be used here. And I'm looking for my do show run command. There we go. So we'll come down here to fast ethernet 03 and there it is. And if we validate that nine Baker 56, oops, sorry, nine Baker 56, you can see we've got a match. We're only two points away here from being done. So let's see what else they're asking for. Now, I thought one of the interesting things here was within the instructions, it says configure sticky MAC addresses that allow only one MAC address. And so my question to you is, do I have to say switch port port security maximum one? No, because that's the default. Now, whether packet tracers looking for that to score something, we're going to find out here in a second, but let's say do show port, port security. And here you have it. Take a look. The maximum count is one. It's already one. That's the default. Here, we changed it to two on fast ethernet zero two, and that's why it says two. And the default mode is shut down in both cases because we weren't told to use any other type of violation mode. So that looks really good. Uh, and if I was to say switch port port security maximum one, again, packet tracer is not scoring that. So that's okay. But if I say do show run, you'll see here that it doesn't say under fast ethernet zero three switch port port security maximum one. That's the default. Same thing. Do show port security. It still shows one, right? So again, I just want to hammer that home. All right, so we're going to ping the default gateway. We did that. Now we're going to test port security. We're going to move the cable from PC2 to PC3's fast Ethernet interface. And it says wait 30 seconds. I'm not sure we're going to need to wait 30 seconds, but we'll see. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click in here. We're going to click on the delete. And is that right? It was two to three, right? So then we're going to go ahead and come back over here. Let's go to connections. Let's grab another straight through cable and go from PC3's fast ethernet 00 to fast ethernet 02. Now remember, on fast ethernet 02, the maximum number of MAC addresses was set to two. 
So we should be just fine. Now, well, let me see if I hit the fast forward arrows here. Let's do the fast forward arrows so now we're kind of waiting around. So ping the default gateway from PC3, and this should be successful. And that's correct. This should work. Ping 192.168.1.1. And what we should also see now when we come to the switch, when I say do show run, we should see that we have reached the maximum number of MAC addresses. We're at two. Right, but that's okay because again, we're under the ma or we're less than or equal to the maximum number of MAC addresses allowed, which is two. And that's why traffic on the port continues to flow and we're not having any issues. Um, so use the do show running config. Oh, wow, they actually gave us points for that. Okay, so we got two points for that and that kind of wrapped things up there. All right, so move the cable from PC4 to PC5's fast Ethernet interface, wait 30 seconds. Well, we know we don't need to wait 30 seconds. We're going to get rid of the cable on PC4. And we're going to come down here. We're going to grab a straight through cable, go from fast Ethernet 00 over here to fast Ethernet 03. Uh, and the port will shut down since the default maximum allowed addresses is only one, since the MAC of PC5 doesn't match. And let's take a look at the, and it says we're going to get a one point for that, but we've already got 36 points. So I don't think we're gonna see a point for that. Let's do the fast forward arrows here. Whoops, let's do our fast forward arrows. Let's get the switch up here. And let's say, uh, oops, sorry, do show port security. And we don't see a security violation count here, but why not? Why do we not see that? There's a reason we don't see that, if you remember from the other activities, but rest assured that port will get shut down. So if I say do show run, we come down here and you can see it still only shows a single MAC address and that's PC4's MAC address. Well, why hasn't that port generated a violation for us? Exactly, because we haven't generated any traffic. So the port doesn't know that there's a new PC connected, but it will shortly when I say ping 192.168.1.1 and take a look at what happened here. Those arrows, I didn't say shut. I didn't shut the port down on the switch, right? They went red. And the reason they went red, do show port security, is because the violation mode is the default of shutdown. And there is our security violation count. And it took one frame and one frame only. So when we had restrict, the security violation count incremented upon receipt of every frame with a source MAC address that was not allowed. With the shutdown violation mode, upon receipt of the very first frame, it is game over, right? And in secure environments, and especially government environments, and the, specifically those three-letter agency government environments in a lot of cases, this is probably going to be the mode. Because if you've got a frame that shows up on a port that is not, that as, as the source MAC address, that is not what it should be, you probably want that port to be shut down, right? So that you can investigate things. And so here we see that it is shut down. Now, if I say show port security, I can also say interface fast ethernet 03 and take a look at the port status, right? Secure shut down. The violation mode is shut down, right? So it's totally shut down. But let's take a look at what, let's look at this here, right? And let's actually see before I pop off of this screen here, what about a show IP interface brief? What does that show for fast ethernet 03? Now you'll notice I said it shuts the port down, but it's not administratively down. It's just down. So remember that it's not, you know, you say that, it sh I say that it shuts the port down, but it's not administratively shutting the port down. And the reason I want to show you that is because of this. So let's disconnect PC5, right? So you're the administrator, you figure out PC5 caused the problem, port security's on. So, hey, that shouldn't be plugged in there. Maybe your junior Windows guy plugged it in or gal plugged it in there. And you say, no, plug PC4 back in. We'll take a look. The port is still down. What if I ping? Does that bring the port back up? And this is an important semantic here of port security. So I plug the correct PC back in. In fact, let's take a look at 
do show run and let's oops sorry show run and let's look at fast ethernet 03 that is the mac address for pc4 so why if it's not administratively down why is it still showing red here and that's because with port security you need to go into the port right you manually need to go into the port for this use case here right you go into the port fast ethernet 03 and you say shut and you administratively shut it down and then you say no shut so you have to knowingly intentionally bring the port back online by first shutting it down and taking it offline all right so that takes care of this activity. I think we're still 36 out of 36. And hopefully this has given you a much better feel for how Cisco's switch port port security feature works. Again, remember those semantics. Know the defaults, violation mode shutdown, maximum number of MAC addresses one, and know that you have to have switch port port security, that command, under each port that you want port security to be running on. It is not enough to just have the options that you want. Switch port port security, aging time. Switch port port security, MAC address um, sticky. Switch port port security, maximum two. You have to have switch port port security by itself or all of those other switch port port security commands are moot. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I hope to see you in the next video.